Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Open Mic with the MVP Marco. I am, of course, your host, the MVP Marco of the Chick Foley Show. Um, I mean, it's a it's one of the greatest podcasts uh, out there right now. Um, we're uh, we're we're rolling heavy with some uh, some new episodes. We've been a lot more consistent nowadays. Uh, obviously, me with the Open Mic, um, Seth and Jordan who's also a part of the show. They have their uh, the Goal Line podcast where they talk all things NFL. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're just flooding the uh, flooding the airwaves right now with uh, with podcasts. But uh, but the main thing is we're brought to you by the uh, the Pod Foundation. Um, and the Pod Foundation is the, you know, the collection of the, the greatest content creators and podcasters known to man. Um, obviously, that's myself, Sheena, Jordan, Seth of the Chick Foley Show. We also have the Extra Cooler Show with Nick and his team. We also have the Turnbuckle Tavern. If you haven't heard of them by now, I'm not sure what you're doing. Um, definitely check them out. They're the ones that uh, you know, that are throwing out podcasts every single day of the week. I'm actually a part of one of them, um, so I'm pulling double duty. Um, I'm on the uh, Chick Fil A Show feed and the Turnbuckle Tavern feed. I um, I do a show called The Raw Down um, with uh, my co-host J Bone, uh, who also has a podcast on the uh, Pod Foundation network which is coming down the aisle with j-bone but yeah definitely check out us check us out on the raw down eight o'clock on thursdays live on youtube and everywhere you get live streaming um you can hear our musings on the current product of wwe and some other stuff as well so definitely check that out but um now that i got that out the way i want to get to my next guest um this gentleman here i've only i've only had one other uh person in his in his uh area um, which is uh, photography, um, specifically figure photography. Um, and his, his, uh, his definitely go check him out. Uh, his artwork is, it's his art is insane. Like the, the pictures, how he, there's like to me, there's like a grittiness to to the way he does uh, his photos and stuff like that. And I and I uh, everyone that's out there that I follow that does figure photography, all, everyone has a different type of style. And I, I, you know, I put him in kind of like that, you know, it looks real, like, like the, the scenes that he creates and stuff like that. So I, I, I'll, I'll stop piping him up. I'll bring him on. So, uh, Matt, let's see, let's bring him in. Yeah. Here we go. Matt Goldberg. How are you? How are you doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing fine. And, uh, I try, I, I try to hype you up there, but yeah, I do. I do really, uh, I do really enjoy your work on your, uh, on your Instagram page. Um, and we'll definitely get to like how you develop that type of style. And, um, I mean, that's my own interpretation, obviously art, it's, it's everyone, it's, it's everyone's own interpretation. And, uh, mine is your, you have more like a realistic approach, um, to your, to your figure photography. Not that everyone else looks cartoony or they look like action figures, but you set, you have these scenes where they, you know, it almost looks like they're real and in action, which is, which is pretty insane. How did you like, How'd you come up with that? I mean, I, I, I'll give you my own interpretation. Is that is that the interpretation that you're going for? Am I, or am I way off base with how you do your uh, photography? <laughs> sure. No, first of all, thanks for uh, the kind words and for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I strive for realism uh, with my photography. I've been at this since, I think it's like 2015. 14 i want to say at the okay. photography end of things so i've been in the community since 2006 um oh wow yeah I, jeremy um from jazz words gave me my first opportunity with jacks when i was a teenager um and i don't know if you're familiar with my whole story it's really crazy around the industry but um a no, really share it. rapid uh path through it is um in 2008 eric bischoff found me on youtube and wanted to work with me but i was just a teenager at the time so my dad took me to ringside fest to meet him at the time because he was actually appearing there and um we had like a meeting and i really got to know him i couldn't believe he reached out to me of course wow. as a longtime fan and um i went to college in florida to study film and television and then him and Hogan went to Impact Wrestling in Orlando. I was in Tampa, so about an hour and a half away or so. And I, you know, called him up. He got me like an opportunity at Impact. Wow. So I got to essentially have like an internship. I wish social media was really a thing more than because I probably would have 
love to have done their social media and stuff back then. But, um, but yeah, I got to hang with all the guys and stuff in the back and did that for about two years. Um, it was a very surreal uh, moment, especially as a lifelong fan to be walking around with Hogan and Sting and Rick Blair, Kurt Angle, all that stuff. It was just insane. Um, I became friends with Elijah Burke and uh, Victoria or Tara there, of course. Um, yep. They're two of my really good friends. Still to this day, um, Matt Morgan was another one. Um, so it was really, really cool. It's surreal. I made some film projects with them for uh, film class, which was really fun. And then um, I think once I graduated college, I went on to work for the WWE for a year doing oh, wow. um, stop motion animation that's still on their YouTube now. Cause that's how I started with stop motion was really my thing back then. Okay. And then once I went to grad school, I was like, I don't have the time to do this anymore. It's just so time consuming. Yeah. I loved it. Built a nice following from it. So I'm like, what can I do that still kind of similar, but not as time consuming. And that mm. was photography. So I taught myself essentially using my film knowledge and just my animation knowledge and just, essentially taking a still out of an animation and that's like my picture sort of thing. Mm, okay. Um, then let's see, I went on to work for wrestle zone and I still work for them. I write for them. Just, I don't write as heavily anymore as it's, I'm just so busy these days, but, um, partnered with ringside collectibles in there too. So I do stuff for them. I don't do stuff for them as often, but I'm still partnered with them. Yep. Um, then I most recently worked for Jazzwares shooting the AEW toy line for them for two years or so. Um, I was in Pro Wrestling Illustrated, I think it was earlier this year, which was I've seen that. Too. Yeah. So like, this is all literally just from my hobby of collecting these figures and making content with them. It's absolutely insane. I'm sure I'm leaving out a lot of other things I can't even think of <laughs> well, on the spot right now, but yeah, <laughs> it's like a really quick summary of a lot of my journey and just collabing with all the different licensees like Mattel. I'm partnered with uh power town. I'm trying to think uh, figures, toy company ringside. Um, Jeez. And I don't know. I'm probably drawing blanks to more. But <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to bring you, uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, jog your memory a little bit because I want to go back for sure um, to, uh, to Jeremy, uh, sure. Pada Jeremy Padauer. If, um, sure. if those that don't know out there, he's the, uh, we, he's in these parts, he's called the godfather right. of, uh, <laughs> of figures because obviously with the Jack's, Jack's line and stuff like that. And he's, sure. uh, he he loves the uh he loves the Chick Foley show. He follows he actually follows us on Twitter, um awesome. and I, we inter I, we interact with him a lot and stuff like that. He he's a he's an awesome dude. How did how did that um how did that relationship come about? Sure. So I was fifteen, I think, at the time, and he had um his own like blog site on Jeremy dot com, mm. and I somehow. I don't know if I stumbled on it through the W figs forum or something, but um, I just, as a teen, I was like, I'm going to send this guy an email with links to my YouTube videos where I, was, I had my own like animated wrestling show mm -hmm. called crash collision wrestling. And it was really popular at the time. And I just was like, you know, what? I'm just going to send him these and see what he thinks. And he like loved it. And I don't remember exactly how it went down, but he wanted to, I was like an influencer before like influencers were a thing. Mm, yep. Really. And uh, so I like partnered with them and they would send me, I don't remember if I really got much WWE stuff from them back then, but um, cause I think it was towards the end of their WWE relationship. Yeah. Um, but I worked on the UFC stuff with them a little bit. And then of course, TNA once I was on like both sides mm -hmm. of, tna which was kind of cool um and yeah and i just got to know him throughout the years and when he started wicked cool toys like i partnered with him and wicked cool to promote the rings and you know the giant i don't even know 20 inch tall figures i forget how big oh, yeah those yeah big that's right things were. Yeah. but um stuff like that which is really fun and then 
uh, most recently Jazz Wars. And um, that happened during the pandemic as I lost my job. And I, and I do social media marketing for a living when I'm not working for everybody else in this community mm -hmm. or myself. And um, they had an opening for social media, which I was like, oh, this would be perfect. So I went through the process with that with them, but because the pandemic was so like rampant at the time and it was so unknown, they like wanted me to relocate. I'm like, I don't like feel comfortable relocating yeah. right now with all, you know, not knowing how extreme or whatever with the pandemic. And um, we tried to work remotely and it like didn't work or whatever. They couldn't figure it out or something. So I was like really gutted by it and had to step away from it. And then I don't know if it was like a few weeks later, he's like, he like texted me. He's like, Hey, do you want to shoot the AEW toy line? I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> and that's honestly much more exciting anyway, because social media covered all their properties when obviously I'm a huge wrestling fan. So yeah. just focusing on AEW, um, it was a dream opportunity and it was a craft ton of work. Um, you know, working a full-time day job and then doing mm -hmm. that essentially full-time too. Like I was just, creatively wiped but i pushed through it because it was a dream opportunity and you know having some of my photography on like the ringside um it's the rampage ring set so like my work's all over that ring which is really oh, okay cool on the packaging um so that was a surreal moment and just like having my work of course living on amazon and target and walmart and gamestop and then seeing it like on comic-con displays and stuff um, it was all very, very surreal, but it was just like so much work. And um, I just felt like I was kind of like losing myself a bit between mm -hmm. doing that and my day job. And, um, you know, once I know the line like kind of took a hit this past year or whatever, I th everything kind of changed. So it was kind of a good time to, to step away. Um, and obviously the line isn't exactly the same as it used to be, sadly. Yeah. But, um, so I felt like I was really at the peak of that line and it was really cool. I'm very, uh, grateful for that opportunity and stuff too. But, um, but yeah, that's my relationship with Jeremy in a nutshell, pretty much. So known him a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, um, it, it, I think, yeah, with the, with the strategy before with, uh, the AEW line, it seemed like it was more, you know, like just putting a lot of lines out and stuff like that. And then, Obviously, you know, like you said, that was during the pandemic and everything and, and actually coming out of it. And then, you know, now it's like, like you said, it's a little bit different yeah. um, with with a lot more. I think they probably a lot more strategy now when it comes to releasing <laughs> their figures. That's what I'm that's what I'm assuming. They change change the strategy up a little bit. Plus, they're going to be you know opening up that um, the vault yes. website yes. too next year. So that's probably going to help help out a lot with like the the figures that, you know, the, the exclusive figures. And, you know, that like. One thing I, I do trust about uh, Jeremy Padauer is the you know, obviously he's a collector himself, For um, sure. and he understands like the exclusivity of a lot of things. So I don't think you'll see like any like repeats and stuff like that when it comes to uh, releases on that like vault site and stuff like that. And obviously you're gonna get the ROH line uh, when For that sure. comes out, but you know any like exclusives and stuff like that. I don't see you'll see an exclusive on that vault site, and then. And it like the same exact one on ringside or, right. or Amazon or right. something like that. So that's the one thing I trust with uh with him anyway when it when it comes to that. He had, he was actually on um on the Turnbuckle Tavern. They had him uh they did an interview with him. Uh they have a show called Fig Night. For sure. Um and they he he he's he uh, answered all the questions. He you know he talked about like you know, his past, how he got in collect into collecting and all that type of stuff. And it was it was actually very interesting. He's an interesting uh guy yeah. to say the least but um so how was when did you start your, your your love for like collecting and figures and things like that <laughs> um i always typically say i started around i i like to say it started when i was like four my dad um my mom and dad were really into the trading card business when it was hot in the 90s okay. like the michael jordan cards and everything and they were always like in like the sports memorabilia like industry essentially and you know so they were already collecting and like going to stores and 
you know, hunting down like cases of cards and stuff. And, you know, my mom and dad just got me into toys when I was a kid. And, um, you know, I had wrestling and Star Wars and whatever else back then. And um, just never really outgrew it, I guess, you know, like a lot of people do. And, um, you know, my mom and dad would hunt down a lot of the figures for me as I got older. And then once I started creating content, with the figures and like I developed like a nice following. I'm like, Oh, like, you know, I'm really on to something here. So I just, it like kept like the collecting going. I don't honestly, I don't know if any of that didn't happen, if I would still heavily collect Mm -hmm. hard to say, but because of all the crazy opportunity and things that have come from it, like, you know, and I'm blessed to even be relevant in this community as long as I have been anymore. But um, you know, it's just having such a dedicated and wonderful, uh, supportive audience that keeps me mm. going and collecting. Cause now I feel like, oh, I got to keep up with, you know, the latest figures that have for my photos. And, you know, thankfully I have sponsors like ringside and stuff where I get a lot of that um, yeah. from them to shoot and stuff, which I'm very grateful for that. Um, but yeah, I, I need to have everybody for my photos cause I never know when I might need a certain look or, you know, or if someone's like, Hey, I really need you to shoot this for us or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, okay. Um, but I just love doing it. You know, every week I push myself to release at least one photo a week. Yeah. Um, You know, now I have prints that people buy and ask me for, which is very surreal. You know, I never thought anybody would ever want to own like physically own my photography. And that's been such a thing in the last year. Um, where people are like, oh, will you sign it? I'm like, really? Like, you want my autograph? You know, <laughs> sort of thing. So, it, it, and my family will laugh at it because it's like to them, it's just so like, <laughs> you know, like, even though they're super supportive, but like, yeah, they just find it funny that someone wants my autograph of all things. <laughs> but yeah, people like go crazy asking for prints and stuff. And it's just very surreal and humbling that um, people want that stuff. And like the most recent story I shared on Nick Storm's. Um, show mm-hmm. that uh, Brody Lee's wife Amanda Huber messaged me a few weeks ago uh, out of the blue and said that uh, negative one is like obsessed with my photography and he has it like all over his iPad and he's always ranting and raving about it and stuff and I thought it was like super that's uh, awesome amazing because I've always loved Brody Lee and you know Luke Harper and the Wyatt family everything like they're he was one of my all-time favorites and so that was like a really surreal moment for me to have her just in my inbox like that. Like, hey, my son really loves your stuff. So it's really, really cool. So you just never know who's following you or who's watching your stuff. And it's just really motivating to keep going. Yeah, like I said, it's definitely uh, like like I said, you, your work definitely, you know, is is definitely our work. If you are, you know, if you are, if people are requesting prints and stuff like that for you for you to send to them there there are definitely a few on there that i mean i didn't know you did that but um yeah. <laughs> there are a few definitely on there that i've seen that they can definitely you know are definitely like print worthy there's um one i think it's uh it's old school sting and he has like the um the the bird on his arm yeah, that, yeah. that's a sick photo like that that you could definitely that could be definitely framed somewhere or, or, or yeah, like Thank in a you. game room or like a you know like your whatever room you have like a like an entertainment room that, yeah just that shot is awesome it, it actually looks like it's it's, it's really on it on it really on, i was like what the hell is that an actual <laughs> photo and that's where i got like the uh like i started looking at more of your photos and stuff and i'm like it, it looks that's where i got the realism aspect of it and now knowing that you did stop motion that makes a lot of sense because now you just having that skill of doing stop motion now you have that like you have that insight to like you know do those poses and stuff like that right. and make it look more realistic which is which I mean, I'm not sure if a lot, a lot of other, you know, figure photographers have that um, that skill set or did that before. But that's that's definitely an advantage on your part to have that. I think I would think <laughs> yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Like especially with um, like aerial moves and stuff. Yeah, you know how to rig them up to to pose them. It's still a challenge. Like I really love to challenge myself. Um, as you'll see, like the sting photo. Like I'm always trying to outdo myself 
in my work. And I mean, there's a ton of amazing people in the community and there's a lot of wonderful artists, you know, I'm pretty friendly with almost everybody, I would say. Yeah. Um, as you know, everybody should support each other, be cool sort of thing. And, um, but yeah, I just always try to compete with myself. Like the one I'll be posting on Friday, um, which I wrapped up yesterday, like you, you'll see it was an interesting approach. And like, I had this vision in my head for a good week or so now, and, you know, to actually see it come to life the way I wanted it to, like made me really happy and like i just yeah. <laughs> really like excited and fulfilled to like share it with you guys because like people just eat it up you know they love it and it oh yeah me just feel really good that it's like okay like this picture that i just spent like four or five hours on or whatever like is really resonating with the community yeah, definitely. You know? so that's fun. um what is your what so i, I remember I, I did ask figure kingdom this and i'll ask you as well <laughs> what's your um what's your process look like when you're coming up with these ideas, it's something that you like, you know, you just sitting there and you think about it and then you automatically put it out. Do you like write things down? Do you put stuff in your, like your iPhone or your Android, or whatever, whatever device you have, your computer? Like, how do you, do you keep all these notes and then come back to them later? How, what does that process look like when you're coming, you know, when you, when you get ready to uh, shoot a photo? Sure. Um, so a lot of times these days, you know, when I'm watching the pay-per-views in a raw or AEW, whatever, SmackDown, um, if I see something, I'm like, Oh, that would be really cool to recreate. And then I get like really obsessed with almost matching their outfit and everything. If I can. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, like Christian with Luchasaurus, I hunted down like a whole outfit to put him in his turtleneck and his brown jacket and his shoes. And like people don't, necessarily really like, sometimes how much money i spend on one shot like <laughs> I to, can to imagine it, you know but like um i do have uh, like in my notes in my iphone like i started i at least i was earlier this year so i would like build out a calendar essentially of each month so okay. i do every friday is usually my goal um so that's like four shots a month so i'll like start listing them and go down my list um, you know, sometimes I push one back or I like, you know, I don't really like this idea anymore. I'm going to go on to the next one. Um, but I also follow, um, a handful of the AEW photographers mm. on Instagram because they post a lot of their work and I'll be like, Oh, that would be really cool to recreate in figure form. And, you know, now oh, some of them okay. follow me and, you know, it's like they see their work recreated in toy form or whatever, which is just kind of cool for them um but yeah that's usually watching um or i'll see pictures online or i'll just get a new figure like sometimes with ringside of course or if mattel sends over something like let's say like the mm -hmm. muhammad ali or whatever they sent over say like, okay i need to do some research on muhammad ali and you know his wrestling wrestlemania moment or whatever and see if there's something that jumps out at me that would be fun to recreate. Yeah. Um, not always easy. It's hard sometimes like when you're given a figure that you're not as inspired by. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, but now like I love partnering with a lot of the artists in the community to showcase their work within mine. Um, I've just always loved giving people a platform. It's like a way to give back to the community because everybody's been super supportive of me. You know, and I wouldn't have gotten majority of these opportunities without their support. So to me, it's like the least I can do and something I really enjoy is like, oh, this person makes a shirt or this person makes a belt or like custom toy rings made the in your house stage. And he's like, hey, yeah. I send you this. Can you do a cool set with it? I'm like, OK, you know, so then it's like, all right, now I got to do some homework and see what would be really fun to do with this sort of thing. And um it's really fun it's a lot of work and then like i have those giant projects i don't know if you saw those like the cody versus rollins hell in a cell yeah that was that with the animation yeah. and all that stuff the uh the video package and yeah yeah i, I hype it now it's like a video package and then That's the awesome. project comes out and people collect those posters now too is like a thing where i do like a limited run of posters and then people are like oh i really want that and 
So that's really fun too. But um, they did like Punk versus MJF and the collar, the dog collar match, and um, a bunch of those. And those take a lot of prep and research, and uh, usually a bit of money too to get those as accurate as possible. Yeah. Just getting my customizer friends the parts to make them in the exact outfit they wore, mm. you know, in that match and stuff. So it's like really fun for me being super detail oriented i'm like obsessed with detail which is probably where the realism aspect of it comes out yeah okay um, so makes... i like to make it as close to accurate if possible but yeah that definitely makes more sense now now that i'm now that i'm talking to you and now that like you know now i'm like putting the you know your words to how you're yeah how they come out now now it's starting to make a lot more sense like where that process comes from um uh, uh, figure kingdom when he was in our uh, chick foley uh well he still is but he used to do this like every friday he would do like a um a behind the scenes like live oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, uh, facebook yeah. group yeah. and he would like show like the process and like sure you know, what he's doing and like show like you know, obviously like the strings if he's if it's like an aerial move like and he like take us through the whole thing and it, it you are right it is like just seeing that it is it definitely is a lot and it it, it could come to a point where you like have everything set up and like you said, you might be like, damn, I don't like this. I don't like yeah, how it looks. Okay, I have right. to start all over again. Yeah. That, that, like, what is what is that like? Obviously, we, we talked about like the uh the pluses of uh <laughs> you know photography. What's the what are the uh like what what are the downsides to not downside in the sense where like sure. you don't want to do it anymore, but like what are like some of the setbacks you have when doing when uh when doing these uh types of uh, shoots? Sure. Um well that's the life of an artist, you know, or our biggest critic essentially. And, um, you know, I'll, I could usually tell when a shot's not going well, where, you know, like the setup part shouldn't normally take me more than an hour. And, you know, then usually that night I will sit in bed and edit and it'll be like some it doesn't happen often thankfully but there are times where i'll be like editing it i'm almost done or i'm done and i look at it, i'm like something's off like i don't like this or whatever and my wife will be like where are you going it's like you know 10 30 11 at night <laughs> i go back down to my table to go shoot everything again Jeez. Um, yeah and i try so every friday i try to release something so i try to typically shoot earlier in the week to protect myself and that if I don't like it, I have at least another day or two to yeah, <laughs> to me, visit that, it if I want. Like last night I was working on my shot for Friday and I must have re-edited it like six times. I didn't reshoot it, but I had to keep adjust. Like I find like the tiniest little things. I'm sure if I go back and look at it again, I would be like, oh, yeah, edit it again. But most of you guys wouldn't even probably notice what the hell I'm like so hung up on. <laughs> you know, a little mark on their shoe or like oh. you know, something's a little blurry and I want it to be, you know, a little more crisp or something. And it's like just my OCD as an artist, um, you know, and like I said, like I am a perfectionist. I won't lie there. Like I really strive for professionalism with my work. And that's no knock on anybody else's. That's just how I am with my stuff. And I'm really obsessed with making it look really nice. Um, God forbid someone noticed some little detail, which you probably yeah. wouldn't. But, <laughs> but it bothers me, you know. So I want it to look really nice. So, And it's really cool like when the wrestlers end up sharing it sometimes or they like it. You know, like that's really rewarding. Like Kenny Omega shared a shot of mine a long time ago and it's not often he shares stuff like that so that was yeah. really cool but um yeah it's awesome <laughs> that was gonna be my that was gonna be my next question actually actually because sure. i you know i talked to a lot of well a couple of artists uh like, like i said nolanium extra cooler um sure. some cosplayers as well and um they they all said you know at some point in time they you know like you said wrestlers reach out to them and you know and they, like they'll see something that they post and they'll like reach out and be like, Hey, can I post this on my thing? Does that, I mean, obviously that happens to you, right? And like you, you post something and someone reaches out, they DM you and say, Hey, this is sick. And I, you know, can I, like you said with Kenny Omega, has there been any other 
um wrestlers oh, yeah um i mean we're lucky i guess if they do reach out sometimes they just take it and post yeah it. just <laughs> don't give <laughs> but, credit yeah you know, and that drives us crazy which is why <laughs> i watermark a lot of my mm. stuff these days because i know my stuff travels more often than not yep which is flattering of course but i want it to come back to me in some capacity you know um but yeah i've had uh paul Heyman shared my work a handful of times over the years and i love paul Heyman, so that was like really really cool for me to see him do that um yeah kenny omega was one um i think like no way jose was one at one point um, oh, that's cool I've had a handful of people. I'm trying to think uh, who else has really stood out. So like my shot for Fridays with Dan Housen, and I know he's a big collector, so I'm really hoping oh, yeah. he sees it and loves it enough to want to even just retweet it or something would be really cool. But yeah, yeah, that's um, sick. Yeah. Which, um, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's more. I'm just drawing a blank to at the moment, but it's always super cool to see that. Which, uh, what, so uh, well, I want to skip, I want to kind of like go into the collecting part of it. So, like, right. do you collect, um, just wrestling figures or do you have other collections? Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, <laughs> people who are friends with me on Facebook would probably laugh at you asking that. But, uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, my, uh, oh, yeah, I only asked because, um, I interviewed, uh, <laughs> Kyle Peterson, sure. um, who's, uh, sure. he, he was, uh, he's actually, that episode's actually out now, but, you know, he talked about, you know, obviously he, he, on his YouTube page, he, he does unboxings of everything, not just wrestling figures. It's, sure. it's literally everything out there. GI Joe, the transformers, um, NECA figures pop, like literally every, he does everything. So like, and there are people that just strictly like collect wrestling figures that like, collect <laughs> everything. Are right. you the everything person? Yeah, Do you collect? Yeah. <laughs> My wife would probably well, not probably, but she would wish that I just stuck to wrestling, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> yeah, you just went, uh-huh, in the background. But, it might be easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, being I've collected a long time and, you know, a big fan of film and television and pop culture, essentially. So, obviously, like, all the Funko Pops and stuff behind me here. But um, I mainly, I mean, obviously, wrestling is my number one. Then I, you know, the Mandalorian got me into collecting Star Wars again. Mm -hmm. um, I collect some Marvel Legends. I collect a handful of the NECA, like, horror figures and, like, their Gargoyles line I really like now. Um, Funko Pops, I wish I didn't collect, but I do. They <laughs> are freaking wallpaper in my house. Um, yeah, I mean... I like I just have always loved like having a toy of like my favorite characters from movies and shows and stuff and it gets out of hand especially now as you get older because now it's like everything's about nostalgia and they're like making yeah. toys of characters you never had as a kid it's like oh sweet like, I'd love a, a figure <laughs> of like Spongebob or Pinky in the Brain or something you know it's like do I really need that no but <laughs> gotta have or my favorite video game character or something you know so it's hard you know, self-control is really, really hard, but I'm thankful at least to have like a ringside that at least helps cover mm -hmm. some of those bills for me. But, um, but yeah, I'm probably very similar to Kyle Peterson. I know he's <laughs> always posting his reviews and everything of yeah. all the random stuff he gets. And I could definitely relate. What's your, uh, do you have a favorite line besides wrestling figures that you collect? Um, I'd say probably the Star Wars Black Series line is mm. a line I really collect in full, which I don't for most. Um, like Marvel, I used to collect them by the set a long time ago and then cut them off. But now I'm, you know, now that they have all the movies and the shows. I'm like, oh, you know, I like having the figures of the people from the movies and shows versus like the comic book versions or whatever. So like, yeah, I kind of collect all that most of the mcu stuff um but yeah i'd say star wars is probably my most similar um line i collect to like all the wwe elites and ultimates and stuff but i i am really enjoying the neca gargoyles line a lot because that reminds me of having the figures as a kid and yep. stuff so it's really cool 
and they're pumping those out like crazy right now which is annoying because they're expensive and it's like damn it like i don't necessarily want to have all these coming out so fast with everything else constantly coming out but but yeah <laughs> well that's like with the uh like with the uh, uh teenage view ninja turtles like that license is shared like with so many different companies <laughs> and his figures like tons of different figures out obviously neck is one of them uh playmates still still yeah. doesn't stuff like that um it's in it, it me like like the nostalgia part of it i want to go back and like start collecting or start grabbing all the ninja turtles figures but i know that's probably not a smart thing to do yeah so i try to i try to limit myself if i am gonna you know go with uh ninja turtles uh uh and i have to get all four i can't just get one um I technically don't have a favorite Ninja Turtle, so all four of them. Um, right. I, of course, you gotta have all of them, you know. Yeah, of course. I I had um, I had uh, her name's Queen G um on IG, and she's uh she collects Ninja Turtles like literally every, all the, literally everything. But her favorite is Donatello, so like it's all Donatello, like <laughs> every variation you can think of and stuff like that. Right. So like I couldn't just do that. I have to have all four. So like that would be very hard for me to uh, jump into that, and especially with NECA, like they do s- such a great job with the, oh, yeah. with the with the figures, with the with the cartoon line as well as like the movie line, and then now the the crossover, the monsters crossover, yeah, that they have two as well. So uh, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't be able to you know keep up with that. Like you said, it, it is expensive. It and, is. Uh, we try to with the with with Chick Foley, like the, what we try to preach is like you know don't try to collect every single thing like i because you get fomo obviously with figure collecting like yeah, something comes out and everyone's like posting pictures yeah. hey i just got this hey i just got this and you're sitting there like i don't have any money i can't get anything yeah. but at the same time it's like you that shouldn't be that that takes away the joy of collecting if you're you know you want to buy every single thing that comes out like it should be mm. things that you want to buy like you want to collect like i had to really live in myself like at at some point and be like this i'm just gonna live myself to like you know just exclusives maybe on like Mattel creations that's you know just wow. get those and okay. then if something comes out on ringside that I find interesting if it's my favorite wrestler or something like that I'll get it like like the late like the last figure I got was uh was edge from uh his the uh the one. recent one the judgment yeah. day uh yeah. edge so like and I'm an edge fan so I I uh that's why I, I'm sorry Adam Copeland yeah. <laughs> you know, can't be called edge anymore but uh yeah stuff stuff like that like how is that how is your philosophy with uh with with um you know like collecting uh figures and stuff like that is it just like do you do you try to limit yourself as well is it do you have like a a process that you go through is it just like that i'm just i'm getting (laughs) just grabbing it it's it's gotten bad honestly but um my basement right now looks like a back room of a walmart or target (laughs) (laughs) that's my attic keep up with like everything i buy but like the reason I do that really is because when I was younger and the classic superstar line was out, you know, like I really enjoyed collecting that line with my dad. Cause he'd, you know, teach me about, Oh, this guy used to wrestle when I was younger or whatever. And, you know, like I learned about people with him, which was fun, but I didn't collect everything like I do now. And, you know, before Mattel really took over, I would like regret not picking up, like a mankind or something. And I wasn't really on eBay and stuff as a kid. Obviously, you know, my parents didn't want to really create that monster knowing everything's just available on the internet. But, (laughs) um, you know, I just had like FOMO regretting, like not picking stuff up. So like when Mattel started, and I think there's only like one elite I don't have, but, um, you know, I just get everything now because, and especially with my art, like, you know, I might not need like the 15th Undertaker, but there could be a moment with another figure. I'm like, oh, he wore this outfit in that match. I need that figure yeah. for this moment because that's just how OCD I am. Like, I don't want to just use a random Undertaker. I want that Undertaker mm-hmm. so it looks yeah. accurate as possible, you know. So I try to not pass up on things and granted i'm fortunate enough to be able to to have the luxury to just pick up something when i see it um but like my mom and dad always joke is like i don't necessarily need to buy it in the first place sort of yeah thing. so 
but what's the fun in that you know like oh exactly yeah, yeah. It's a... <laughs> like you That's could save more money not buying it but it's like no i want to <laughs> buy it so yeah i definitely yeah. want to bring uh bring that back uh, the uh the stuff with the dad because i was i was actually thinking of like you know with, with my father uh, you know just you know i grew up watching more of the um uh S southern wrestling so mid-south sure that type of stuff um you know the von erics and all that and then obviously i moved my way up to the you know you know wwf and and all that stuff but my my thing was like i would love to get like the power town figures but they're like obviously super <laughs> super like i i'd want the whole set i wouldn't want to just get like harry von eric or like, sure. i just i'd want to get like every every single person and it's very expensive so like that those only ones i'll kind of like you know kind of be like you know have, have have fomo on but um and i'm fine with that because i have like you know my other means would be like you know junkyard dog dog figures which my my father that was his favorite wrestler so i have i pretty much have all the elites that came out of the uh, of his i have the ljn of it i have the uh the retro yeah. that came out and stuff like that so i got those at least um definitely waiting for hopefully they're you know they release them in the uh, coliseum collection that's what I'm looking yeah, for. Since they right. and all the LJNs, yeah, um, yeah, can't wait for that to happen with the you know the ultimate edition like chain, like an actual chain, which would be pretty cool and all that stuff. But um, I want to go back because I want to talk about like with with your with your wrestling fandom. So did that? When did did that start with your father? Did he bring you into you know wrestling and what wrestling were you introduced to that sure. made you a fan? Um, yeah. So my dad grew up watching it with his brothers and his parents um and then he got me into it i'm sure around three or four i would say because i had a lot of the bone crunchers and stuff as a kid okay. and the old wcw like ljn style those are like my first wrestling figures in the little hasbros and stuff yep um and you know and honestly i I love wrestling is a huge part of my life, but I still think I enjoy collecting a lot more than the actual product of wrestling. Mm. Um, I, I love it though. Like I watch every week. It's all it's on in our house, but uh, most cases, um, but yeah, I got into it with him. And like, as I got older, like, you know, my dad's really big into sports and stuff. And he always tried to get me into it as a kid. And I played sports as when I was really young but I was always just really um, attracted to like drawing and art and stuff. And um, which is why I pursued videography and stuff. And, um, you know, so as I got older wrestling, it's always been a part of my life. So my dad keeps up with it so he could share that with me. And like, you know, I'll go with him to a lot of events and stuff. Mm. Um, Cause it's just some, like, it's such a strong bond that we share. So it's fun. Like I took my dad to All Out um, in Chicago last year. Oh, awesome. Punk, Punk versus Moxley. And like, you know, being I had that connection, like my old TNA family actually runs AEW mm, behind the scenes. So like my one of my old like bosses or supervisors there, like he works there now. So he like got us right on the floor, like um that's cool a few seats behind like the gate like the barrier or whatever which i've other than that tna like i've never sat that close at a wrestling show and that being like one of my first aw shows i think like it was very spoiling to be sitting that close and like yeah. <laughs> with my dad was really cool and um you know and i know he's like so proud of me of course but like seeing like all the relationships I've made in this industry that I love so much. And, um, you know, none of us ever expected my obsession with toys would ever lead to touching all the major brands and working with yeah childhood heroes like Hulk Hogan and stuff. Like, you know, it, it's just really crazy. And just kind of giving him that opportunity to see what I've accomplished essentially at my young age like it just means a lot to be able to like share that yeah with my dad sort of thing so um my mom doesn't care for wrestling really i mean she it's always on in their <laughs> house too because my dad's watching it to talk to me about it yeah stuff and like my wife um 
you know, like she's met Eric and Victoria and stuff. And like Elijah was at our wedding or whatever, which is really oh, that's cool. awesome. And so like he stayed at our house. So she loves him because she's gotten to know him the best of them. Yeah. And, stuff. and you know, she did. She isn't really a fan of it, but, you know, like the other day she just name dropped like Dusty Rhodes. And I was like so proud of her for. <laughs> and, Dusty Rhodes. and then she was like kind of shy that I called her out on on that and stuff it was just cute and funny and so it's like she does notice a lot more than she admits to but um it's just really fun to share that with my family and honestly like my interests are so like niche yeah that, you know you can't talk to me about wrestling or toys or i guess video games or movies or tv or something like you're probably not going to get along with me because i just don't like everything that most people do you know like i have such like a bubble of interest and stuff so it's yeah fun to, and that's also why i love the community so much is like i could really share in this with people who speak my language you know mm -hmm. and, yeah uh, it's just fun yeah that's that's one of the main reasons why like i started like doing this show sure was because i you know obviously you know just you know do podcasting and stuff like that and meeting all these different you know personalities and different people and following all these different, you know, uh, accounts and stuff like that. Um, and, and just like the, you know, the, the embracing of, of everybody in the community, everyone's, I mean, everyone that I've run into so far has been really great. I've, I mean, I've made a lot of friends definitely sure. through, through this. And, uh, and I think that's, that's, like you said, that's one of the main things about being in like the figure collecting community, the wrestling community, where obviously, wrestling community can be you know a little <laughs> a little crazy as, as you've seen no on doubt. social media but mm -hmm. as far as uh, overall um it's been it's been pretty great and like i said the reason why i started this because i started seeing all these people and i'm like man i'm really interested in like you know obviously like what they're doing but also like you know i met all these people i'm talking to all these people every single week like i want to know how like you know what what are their other interests besides like you know wrestling and, and you know figure collecting cosplaying whatever you're doing for sure um, i want to i want to know like the other things behind that and um and, and, and hopefully from this like, you know obviously you know making friends and making connections and things like that so um and this that allowed me to do it like i haven't had like a bad reception yet from like you know reaching out to people and saying like hey uh can you you, you want to mind coming on my show and being interviewed and i haven't had one like negative reaction to it everyone's been pretty uh pretty decent um my last one i had um the wrestling classic justin he was oh, on uh yeah. yeah a couple episodes before kyle um i i, I did, honestly didn't think he was gonna say yeah <laughs> i thought he was gonna be like no nah, i'm all set but no he's, he took the time and said yeah he actually did um you know he is friends with sheena chick foley um and uh, they started around like the same time, around 2014. And uh, that was one of my questions. Were, were you aware, like, did you know of like those pages back around 2014? Because I know like there weren't a lot of wrestling oriented, you know, pages on Instagram. Um, the only ones I followed were were Justin and Sheena because um, I found I found Justin through her page because she wore one of his uh, wrestling classic shirts and I clicked on on the uh, tag. And then I went to his page and I seen that he was like posting wrestling stuff. I was like, Oh, finally a page where there's someone posting like, you know, wrestling pictures and all this stuff I can, <laughs> I can follow and like, and then obviously, you know, from then to now, you know, almost 10 years later, it's like community is like way bigger than it was before. Oh, yeah. Were you around that at that time? Like, were you, you said around 2014 is when you started on social media. Is that correct? Or no, that was, photography so oh, that's when you started photography yeah, okay. 2006 i jumped on the youtube so oh, okay my cousin's friend like because i used to make the animated videos for myself and like show my family or neighbors yep. or friends or whoever or whatever and i think it's at my cousin's wedding i was talking to his really good friend who's in the toy industry he's like you should share your stuff on YouTube. And I was like, what the hell is YouTube? Which is so <laughs> weird to think about. And I did. And then like, you know, it was such an early time in YouTube. So it just it really took off at the time and, you know, changed my life, of course. But um, as far as photography, like Instagram was around that time that I joined. And I, I honestly, it's very blurry to me of 
Yahoo's accounts and stuff I saw on there. I'm sure I saw some toy photography. I don't think there's really wrestling toy photography yeah, as much really. as I recall. And so I was inspired by the toy photography. There's like the articulated comic book art group on Facebook where they did like the Marvel and stuff. I was like, what if I did something like this, but around wrestling? So I started with some, I found like friends in the ACBA group who are doing wrestling toy photography like me. I say, like, hey, why don't we start our own thing called wrestling figure photography? And so we launched a group on there to teach people the craft and stuff. And then that, I feel really like lit a fire under that side of the community um, because the photography side like wasn't heard of that I recall back when animation yeah. was really hot. So like now you see like all the toy companies always talking about the figure photographers and it's like really yeah, flattering that that is such like, uh, um, okay, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, um, a column or whatever that's probably the wrong word but there's such like a key part of the figure community now yeah the wrestling figure photography and um you know it's just really cool what it's turned into and like seeing so many new artists there's so many amazing people that just keep coming into the community and you know you try to build those people up or give them advice and teach them things and you know and there's just so many amazing artists out there all over the world now and stuff. And um, it's just really, really cool to see that. And, you know, and then like, as I've gotten older, I've gotten to know like podcasters like yourself and Sheena and, you know, the fully posable guys and yeah. Yeah. You know, Tom and Mike from fig night and, you know, I could go on and on, but like, there's just so many amazing artists, you know, like what you guys do is an art, as well you know it's a different type of media mm -hmm. and it's just so cool to see all the different aspects that people bring to the table and i've always tried to not just be stuck in the photography realm mm. like you know like being on wrestle zone and you know like wrestling figure news source on twitter is my baby so that account like is really respected because of the community you know they help make that account what it is i've made a lot of friends through the reporting side yep. in the community and you know like i've partnered with wrestlingfigurenews.com since we do the same thing you know it's like everybody should just like build each other up and work together yeah you know, there's drama of course in all aspects of the figure community too yep the shame <laughs> but um <laughs> it's just the competitive nature i think of everything but i myself try to avoid all that as much as possible and just have fun and be a, a positive role model, I guess. Yeah. Sort of thing. But that, yeah, that's our, that's, that's what we use as our source. when we do on a uh, chick Foley when we do the, uh, the figure <laughs> yeah. four segment, we use the wrestle figure news source <laughs> as our, uh, as our like, you know, updates. Uh, we want to, we want to like kind of reference what we're like talking about. And if there's sure. anything new and uh, noteworthy, we want to like bring to it. We actually use it. That's what I, I that's what I've always used. I've, I've always used that uh, that page to like you know keep up to date on all my figure news and stuff like that uh, to see what's going on. Obviously, yeah. there's other ones out there, but that's like you're, that's the main source. I mean, there's nowhere there's nowhere else to go for and me that, anyway. That's yeah, no, and that's really <laughs> humbling, and you know, because people don't really know that I'm behind that, and that's not important that people know that I'm behind it because it's just me sharing my passion for sharing news and and yep. stuff. You know, I'll have like Mattel or Power Town or ringside or whoever but hey can you get this help us get this message out or whatever knowing like how obsessed people are with that account you know it's just really funny like people it's, go nuts over it it's the bible man so, it's the bible yeah. for uh <laughs> for figure news yeah. pretty much on on uh on twitter or x or whatever you want to call it nowadays yeah, right. um right. it definitely so uh it, have you have you changed are you going to like are you going to do like other aspects of social media with that page like are you gonna do like are you gonna go to like threads maybe i put, uh, i created it on threads but i have not posted on there because i just don't see enough traction yeah on there with the way they design it, it's kind of annoying to try and find anything so it's a backup because there's all the rumors of x going away or whatever well, yeah, uh, yeah well, that's true. damn you know i spent 
I think it's like that account's been around for like 13 years or something. Yeah. Um, but it started as an account with Jax. Like I made it just to help get Jax like their TNA news out. And like a lot of the wrestlers would follow it and like ask questions like, yo, where's my figure? <laughs> my figure or whatever. So that was really funny. And then once the TNA line died, I was like, well, I don't want this account to go away. So I turned it into just full on figure reporting. And then that really took off. And, yeah. you know, and I just love that people love it so much. Like it just, the community seriously is the main thing that just keeps me going. Because if I didn't have the love and support that I do, I don't know if I would still be doing it, to be honest. So, yeah. I think yeah, I did. I did. Uh, I think I brought that up with uh, with Figure Kingdom when I had him on the show, and he did talk about like you know, figure photography when he first got into it. Um, it was like you said, it was you know competitive, um, you know, and you, you try to you know you try to work with each other, and you know you know, try to like you know get pointers and all that type of stuff, and be kind of like an influence uh, when you get to that you know level, which you which which you're what you're doing, and. Um, and just speaking to you know, <clears throat> like I said uh, Nolanium uh, or Nolan, who's a who's an artist. He 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 created like a you know like a, a thing where he can bring up up and coming artists and kind of put them onto different uh, things. Yeah, like okay. hey, if you know if he knows somebody wants to you know create a you know something for like Chalkline or something like that, and he's not available to do it, he can re reach you know reach back out and say hey, you know that you know Chalkline's looking for this piece, I'm not able to do it. Do you think you can get it done? And then the people are like, oh, well, yeah, I can do it. So, like, I, I think like having that aspect with figure photography as well is definitely, uh, definitely needed. I mean, with all aspects, even even me, if someone ever came to me and like asked me, I'm not like the you know most professional you know podcaster <laughs> there is out there. But if someone came to me and asked me like for guidance or asked any questions, I'm definitely going to help them out. I'm not going to you know turn turn them away and look at them as like competition or anything like that because that's. That's, for sure. that's stupid. There's plenty of room for everybody to do everything. And no, I, like I said, the, yeah, the show here is more like a, like, it's kind of like a break from what we do essentially, because we're talking wrestling nonstop, like seven days a week. So this show I wanted to create as to kind of have that, like, you know, that space in between, like, you know, we do follow these people. We watch their, we like their pictures. We watch their reels, their TikToks. Now let's see, like, Let's see who they like the actual person is because there are people behind these <laughs> these For accounts. Sure. They don't just these pictures don't just magically appear on Instagram and they and they they look the way they do. There there is somebody doing some work behind it, and uh, yeah. I yeah. definitely wanted to try to highlight it as much as I could and you know have a good time doing it. So that's that that was my idea behind this anyway. And just just like going back to like the the community and you know. Uh, being like an influencer for you anyway, because you said, I mean, you did mention earlier, you're kind of like an influencer before influencing was a thing. Do you take that on as a, do you take that on as a responsibility? Cause I know like some people think like influence influencer is kind of like a, oh, like a dirty word. Like you're like trying to just sell people stuff and, you know, you know, get, get everything you can. Um, how do you see that word as, you know, influencer? And do you consider yourself just that? Um, no, like I can, well, I mean, I know my influence, like, for example, the sting photo, the vulture, or whatever, I yeah. can't tell you how many people said, oh, where can I get a vulture for my sting? You know, it's yep. like just something funny, like, like that's not intentional. It's just a, a prop I bought to use, yeah. for, but it's like, that just shows me like my influence with my work and you know i've never had a mindset that i'm like above anybody like when i first was very first starting was inspired by some animator on w figs or something like i messaged them and they totally like blew me off one yeah. respond to anything and it like killed me i'm like why can't you just be nice you know like, i don't understand and then i i made a like a pact with myself like if i ever got to a point like that where I'm inspiring somebody else, like I'm going to take the time to respond to them and stuff. And like, I'll respond to 99% of comments on my post, any message. I don't care if you're like a 12 year old kid or a 50 year old guy or whatever. You know, if you're asking me, Hey, how do I do this with my figures? I don't tell you, like, it's not like 
top secret news or anything and yeah you know and um but you know like i get some people like to be an influencer just to accumulate as much free stuff as you could get but you know nothing is technically free because you're working for it like you're doing work with it yeah it's like your compensation essentially um but i know people could tell like when i'm actively just trying to sell something versus genuinely just creating content with it and i don't like to be like a salesman sort of thing that's like yeah. and especially i don't want to sell someone on junk like i have to believe in what i am selling mm -hmm. to you to promote it like that's why i'm very fussy like what artists and stuff i work with because i have a set standard for myself and i want to work with people who in my opinion and it's not a knock on anybody i haven't worked with it's just whoever i've worked with on certain projects like you know their work mm -hmm. has to meet a criteria in my eyes to be the type of product i want to deliver to my audience you know and um but i am very particular with who i partner with like i don't want to just partner with every single brand or whatever um because it's a huge commitment on top of it like yeah it's, in my opinion it's not fun if you're always bogged down promoting everybody else's products and never doing your own thing so i like to find ways to use their products in my content so it's kind of a win-win for everybody but that i also mm -hmm. feel very fulfilled as an artist because i don't want to just turn into the person that just sells out essentially and just only sells people on crap and isn't actually genuinely in this for the art and mm -hmm. you know and there are influencers out there who you know they will get stuff and then i'll see them flipping it or whatever and it's like you know if you're really in this for the community like why are you selling it you know like yeah i don't part with anything and i mean my wife probably laugh hearing that but yeah <laughs> I don't part with anything i get because i am excited to have it in my collection you know like i value it um and it means something to me like getting all the sets from ringside and stuff it's like these are new characters or versions of people to have for my future content you know and you know ringside super supportive of course and you know very grateful for that and i don't want to just come off like oh hey i'm selling you this crappy figure or whatever that I, everybody thinks is junk i think it's junk i mean unless they really want me to push it or something which happens every once in a while like i want to at least find a way to make it look less salesy and more genuine of mm -hmm. a post but i do have like some of my loom cube lights which i love their stuff i use it but like oh we really want you to make a video reel with them like well i don't usually make reels yeah so it's like now i have to make like this video of me showing me using it which i know people like seeing that part but then it comes off as like oh matt's really just trying to sell us on this this thing and he mm. doesn't actually like like his heart's not necessarily behind this piece of content as much as like his pictures yeah um, yeah know, i've seen like, that yeah, like a picture with like a figure, you know, it could be a thing for ringside, but it's actually just a really thought out piece of content that I'm proud of that just so happens to feature that figure in it versus like, hey, buy this figure, if that makes sense. So, yeah, um, it's not always easy to navigate that fine line, but. I try when I can to make more genuine content than it obviously coming off as all oh, he's just promoting this to promote it sort of. Yeah. Thing. But yeah, I think most people would answer. <laughs> yeah, no, I think most people would be able to tell where, yeah. you know, where you're actually, you know, doing like a paid advertisement or, right. you know, um, or you know, actually, you know, like you said, genuinely putting something out. Um, and it, if they can't tell the difference and that's, obviously on them in, in, in right. that sense. Right. But um, I want to, I actually want to like skip like kind of like way back. And sure. I want to, cause you did speak, you did mention that you did work for the WWE. Um, was it, did you work, was you like, were you like an employee? Cause obviously there's two ways. Like you could be an employee or you could be like a, kind of like a contractor type deal. Like, did you work with them or did you work for them? 
I worked for them as a contractor. Oh, nice. So what, did you, what did you do? What did you do? So did you I do photography and stuff, or I did uh, stop motion, which is still on their page. So it was like recreating. Like if you go on their YouTube channel and type in MBG twelve eleven or whatever, it will come up with I don't know, like five to eight video. I don't even remember how many I did for them. Yeah. But um but it's like recreating moments. Whatever I wanted, they were usually pretty lenient from what I remember. Okay. Um, so I just would recreate and that was in my like dorm room most times. So I like <laughs> dragged all that stuff to school with me and I'm like, I'm not gonna pass up an opportunity with WWE, you know? Oh yeah. Um, so I made it work from school and, um, it was really cool. I just like, I always love the end product of animation, but I don't really miss like making the animation. It was just so time consuming. Did you, uh, did you get to like, was it as involved as your DNA? Um, no, you didn't like, you weren't like talking to like, you weren't sitting in a room with like Vince McMahon and he was <laughs> giving you orders. Or no, like that. Crazy. <laughs> no, I just worked with someone in their marketing <laughs> team at the time. I think it was. Um, no, TNA, I literally had like free reign of the arena, essentially. So I, you know, and because I was really good friends with Elijah and still I am, of course. So like, yeah, I would I was filming a documentary with him for class. So I would follow him into the locker rooms and stuff. Like I'd hear, you know, see all the guys like together just shooting the shit and being goofy with each other and stuff. Yeah. And it's like just really crazy to pull back the curtain that much as a lifelong fan, you know, and um, but you had to be really professional, of course. Like, oh, yeah, I had to bury all my fandom. Like, yeah. Way <laughs> You know, I can't mark <laughs> out or anything because they wouldn't like that. But, yeah, you know, I remember like seeing Sting in his full makeup and trench coat and everything for the first time. I was like, I was like starstruck by him seeing him like that because he was always a favorite of mine as a kid. Um, but, yeah, like Elijah loves collecting. So, like, him and I really bonded over that. I remember a fond memory I have is just sitting backstage and, like, looking at ringside with him at the time we were just looking at all the new figures coming whatever <laughs> year it was um and just going over stuff like that and um but a handful of the wrestlers collect and it was just really cool getting to know some of them you know i was also disappointed by some of them just not being as warm or whatever as i had hoped and oh boy um, i was in a segment with abyss one time Oh, really? Uh, on TV? Yeah, they planted me in the crowd, and I was, like, kidnapped by Abyss. Um, <laughs> Elijah actually was the one who saved me from him, which is ironic of all people. Um, but, yeah, like, my pants were kind of falling down a bit as Abyss was dragging me out of the crowd. It was pretty funny, but... Oh, I really see cool this. Moment. Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, Do you know what is it? So, that's that was actually going to be one of my questions, and I totally yeah. forgot. Now, now you reminded me. So... I was going to say, because you said when you went to AEW, obviously you got to sit front row and all that stuff, and it wasn't as, you know, you were able to do it because, you know, you had, like, the former <clears throat> the former co-workers and stuff. But for TNA, were you at most of the, like, the shows at all? Like, the uh, like the pay-per-views or, like, the TVs or anything like that? Where... Yeah, I would go every week, I think, I would go down there. Um. I wouldn't be with them when they traveled, of course, because I was in school. But yeah, when they were in Universal Studios or whatever, I would go once a week, and then I would typically go to the pay per views there too. Awesome. Um, and it was it was cool, you know. I could just walk anywhere like a camera guy. So obviously, I didn't go like ringside because I don't belong right there. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, Until but, uh. Until Abyss is dragging you into the, uh... <laughs> so how, how was that? Like, how was that experience? Uh, being like, kind of like a part of like, did you get, did, did you get hurt at all? Was he, <laughs> was he he's a big dude. He Abyss. is a big dude. No, it, I remember <laughs> showing up that day and they're like, do you want to be in like this segment or whatever? I was like, sure. You know, I'm like, what the hell are you going to have me do on TV? You know, like, I'm just, I mean, skinny twig me like i don't fit in with these guys you know 
and um they're like yeah we're gonna have abyss kidnap you and there's this other girl who's mm-hmm. like an intern with spike tv or something at the time i think yeah who was there so they put the two of us like in the crowd and like the whole segment i think is in my highlights on my instagram page oh, it's it's a a job if you look through i think it's in there um but yeah like her and i are like scared in the crowd when abyss is like behind us and everybody else is like oh my god abyss is right here and we're like scared <laughs> of him and he like tells elijah like he's coming for everybody or something like that and he like grabs my arm <laughs> grabs the girl and he just like starts pulling us back like up the bleachers and then like into behind this curtain or whatever and there's like a ladder or something we had to come <laughs> down. um but he's like he was one of the nicest dudes ever abyss and uh, i loved working with him he's really really nice um, oh man that's funny dude a giant teddy bear but i gotta see it i gotta watch that yeah you should because it's funny you see like my underwear <laughs> hanging out a bit and stuff it was just really funny but i gotta see your i gotta see your acting ability to see oh, if you're yeah. actually like oscar worthy performance <laughs> <laughs> or emmy um, i should say for tv but uh, what uh what what year was that when you're in tna around i was there Excuse me, I was there 2010 through 2012 because I I was like a sophomore in college and I graduated early in 2012. So was that around like, were you around, was that, was like the main event mafia around that time or no, was that after? I think that was, I was slightly after that, okay. I believe. So was, I mean, did you get, like was that? Aces and eights was the thing. Aces and eights. Okay. Yeah. Was Booker T there yet or no? In TNA, I don't know, right? Or was that at, that might have been after because he was a part of the main event mafia? So you got to see, like, was Kurt Angle there too? Kurt Angle, did you get to yeah, meet RVD. him? Oh, yeah, RVD, Kurt Angle, yeah, RVD, oh, AJ Styles, the Young Bucks were there. Oh, the, man, dude, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy. That's awesome. Um, Jeff was always super nice to me. I really appreciated that. Um, Matt Morgan, who I love. Um, yeah, Stevie Richards, who's awesome. Jeff Jarrett, who is awesome. You know, Samoa Joe was there. The Dudleys were there. Oh, that's Jay sick, Lisa was there. Like, you know, it's just Ric Flair, Hall, Nash, like Hogan, Sting. Like, you can't, like, when are you ever going to be in a locker room with all those people? That's, you know? that's like, that's heaven for most right. wrestling fans. <laughs> right. It was no one's like, ever going to be. Deal. In that position as a wrestling fan, like unless Ever. you go to like a, yeah. obviously a like a WrestleCon or sure. you know something like that a convention, but right. just to like walk in and see like literally all the people or a majority of the people that you grew up watching, I would have been like I don't even know how to act. I would have right. Probably oh, kicked me why out. I had to like <laughs> bottle it all up, you know. And it's and that experience like since like changed kind of how I watch wrestling. Like yeah. I love it. You know, I don't necessarily need to sit and watch every minute of something, but yep. you know, now like when I was at AEW, you know, like I know how to be super professional around all them. Yeah. You know, and stuff. And that, you know, is important to my, you know, professional relationship with those brands and things. And um, you know, like a TNA Bubba Ray or Bully Ray or whatever, his gimmick is very spot on to how he could be as a person he like flipped out on me because he thought i was like a kid who somehow snuck backstage or oh, whatever. Boy, and know. i was like oh dude like i've been here for months now you know like, you don't you know he was he was really shitty to me but part of my <laughs> but uh but i understand because he didn't you know he wanted to like scare me if i was this kid who totally snuck backstage or whatever yeah but, but then he was cool to me after that. But I'll never forget that, like, first impression of him. <laughs> you know? But, uh, no, I've just learned to be a lot different about it. Like, I'm not really big on meeting people as much anymore and stuff. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's just, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of sad in a way how it's changed me where it's like I've had to, like, kind of bottle up that whole side of, the fandom to a degree because of the professional yeah relationship i have with the industry and obviously i'm still a fan of things you know like i was a huge bray wyatt fan if i would have met him you know i'd be professional but like it would have been really 
you know, hard of me to not like mark out a little bit to meet yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't a fan of his, you know, but um, yeah, you know, and then of course being around Eric Bischoff and stuff, um, you know, he, I'm friends with him on Facebook and he'll like, and he's connected to my dad and stuff too. And like, he'll always like comment on my dad's posts about me and stuff. And it just, you know, means a lot that he like, you know, as I've known him for over 10 years now, that's crazy, you know, and for him to still be any part of my life, it just means a lot to me. And, you know, I've never like abused that relationship, you know, like I could text them right now if I wanted to, but I'm not yeah. going to, you know, <laughs> ever burn that bridge. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know? So being professional, it's just changed how I view the industry a lot, but yeah. Um, still love it obviously like it's just such a part of my life i don't know yeah what i'd be like without it but I, yeah i never I, you actually you bring like a different like aspect to to fandom as far as you know being a wrestling fan because i never obviously i've never spoken to anybody that's and, well actually no that's a lie freaking justin <laughs> from the wrestling classic but like he didn't really go into that that aspect of it of being the you know like the professional but obviously you know he, you know, he talked about how he he interviewed Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's oh, on his, cool. you know, Instagram page, and like he said, he had to like, you know, hold it in because that's Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> arguably, arguably, you know, if you want to argue the biggest wrestler like ever, so like it's a, uh, you know, that right there, he had to like bottle it in. But like, if you were in that situation, you already like, you're just gonna be like, you know, you already have that like mental like aptitude to be like, all right. It, it's you know i'm in i'm in business mode now i'm not i'm right. not in fan mode i can just go say hi and you know if i have to do an interview with stone cold that's what, just what it's going to be an interview right I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna that so like i never like thought of that like heaven because if if i was presented that opportunity i'd probably mark out but like like you said you kind of not you weren't deprived of being able to you know express how you feel to the to them but like it was like you said it was kind of held back so like did that like like you said? Did that diminish your fandom at all? Like having to do that, or was it just you know, just like oh, you just treat it as a job? And you know, I have this is what I have to do. Then I have to do it. Yeah, I think more of the job aspect. Like Hulk Hogan's always been a favorite of mine since I was a kid. So like, I know Eric at times like would have Hulk come up to me, and I was like, oh my god, like Hulk's coming up to me right now, sort of thing, you know. But like. <laughs> You know, like when I was, I had my last day or whatever, and I was graduating college. Like Eric had must have prompted him at some point, and Hulk just came up to me randomly, and I was just like on my phone, just hanging backstage, and he like congratulated me on on college and stuff, and like it just meant like the world to me that he just came up to me. And but you know, I'm not like, oh my god, it's Hulk Hogan. Like (laughs) I can't do that, but it was just a really really cool moment, and like I took a really nice picture with Hulk that is just one of my favorite pictures with him. And, um, yeah, I don't know if he would necessarily remember me now, but yeah, when I would see him at, I feel like I saw him at some like convention or something. And he, I think he kind of remembered me, which I like, meant a lot to me that he did. Um, but that's like my favorite part of the whole thing is just having the relationships. I do like Elijah and I, like I was just messaging him on Instagram today. It's like he's a, I mean, I could text him or whatever too, but like, um, you know, he's a huge Michael Jackson fan. So I'm always sending him like the Funko Pop pictures, like when they reveal like, yeah. you know, coming and like we just <laughs> share in those fandoms together. And it's just, I just love that um, we have that really close relationship and like, um, you know, when he's like live on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, I like to pop in and try and crack him. Yeah. <laughs> when he's like with all these other people he's talking to, and he always gets like really excited when I pop in. So it's just like that's like my favorite part of it is just that I've made those lifelong relationships with um, these people I grew up watching. You know, like yeah. I never in a million years thought I would be friends with some of them. And, um, you know, and they appreciate me because I don't, you know, I'm not drooling over them or whatever when I see them. You know, I treat them as just normal people and that's what they want, you yeah. know. So, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. 
I was actually going to say that. That's like, you know, that's one of the, you know, lessons, you know, that I would take from, from you is basically like, you know, if you, you, you're in a position where you're not, you're not at a signing per se, you're not paying to see these people. You are granted an opportunity to be around, you know, these ladies or gentlemen, um, to, you know, take it as a, take it as that, just an opportunity and, and right. show like, cause I think what, what, what it was kind of, it wasn't like outright that they said it to you, but I think how they did it was like, it was like a test for you. It was almost like, you know, you earn you, you basically you're there. We're going to see how he acts <laughs> basically like, and we're going to earn the, and you earn their respect. That's basically what I, that, right. that's how most friendships are built on. It's, is is earning respect and earning earning that right to be around that person. And if you don't, I mean, obviously, if you're not gonna, you know, treat that person the right way, you don't deserve to be a, around them. So, you right. know, just hearing you talk, I don't think it was, you know, like it wasn't like you like, oh man, I'm a wrestling fan and I'm not gonna be able to like mark out and get autographs and all this stuff. It you the relationship is worth more than anything. Now you have these <laughs> lifelong, like you said, you have these lifelong relationships now. And that's worth more than an autograph or worth more than a picture. Like you have some, you have most of these people's like numbers in your phone. Like you can literally just like, like you said, text whenever you want, but right. you don't right. do that because that, that's your friend. You're not going to, I mean, I don't even text my friends every day. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you treat them the same way every year and the other right. friend in your life or family member. Right. So, uh, no, that actually makes sense. That's actually, that's, I mean, that's actually a good lesson to anybody that like, uh, you know, wants to get into, you know, any type of like business surrounding wrestling, be it like podcasting, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, photography, artistry, however you want to do it. And just, just, just from doing this show and speaking to different people and everyone kind of has the same message, but yours is more in depth. Cause you actually were like working alongside with everyone. But um, a lot of the like artists and stuff that I interview, they work with like the wrestlers will reach out and say, Hey, can you do this for me? Can you, you know, can we like collaborate on this? And like with extra cooler, you know, he's working with uh, sure. FTR right now with, you know, all like their merch and their merch is literally amazing. His, his artwork. So like, it, it, you know, that that's worth more to him than, you know, just getting there. Like I said, getting an autograph or right. anything like that. Like he can say like my artwork is like on their shirts and possibly on an action figure at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might buy an F, you might buy an FTR, you know, figure at some point and you'll see the, you know, his logo on it, which is actually, actually no. And he also works with, um, Matt Cardona too, the uh sure. the whole indie god thing. That's that's that, all him. Those are his designs, a skull that's with the hat and everything. That's that's, that's awesome. extra cool. So like, that. you know, he uh, you know, just having that, like, you know, he has those relationships now and just and just to bring it back to how we talked about seeing people grow and seeing, you know, helping other helping others out, like being able to see, you know, him from like when we when we first he was making our logos for the Chick Foley show, um, and other wrestlers' logos, but now it's like you know, he's working directly kind of with, with everybody. So, you know, That's it's, it, it's important definitely to keep those relationships um, at some point. Cause you know, you never know when you're going to need them. Um, and you never know when you're just going to need, you know, have, just have a friend. And you just yeah. like, Hey, you can just reach out to that person and talk to them. Right. I mean, um, I guess that's like my relationship with Jeremy, you know, I've known him half my life, but like, you know, I just, reached out to him when Jazzers had an opportunity and he helped me get my foot in the door. And then I ran with it from there, you know? So it's like, it's just important to always be professional and yeah. kind yep. to these people, you know? And um, I never like asked for autographs really, maybe once or twice or whatever. And they'd ask me like, is this for you or are you selling it? I'm like, no, this is for me. <laughs> like, I'm not one of those types of people. And, um, and I still have all of my autograph stuff. It's at my parents right now, but like, you know, I, I cherish the people I worked with and the relationships. And that's why I'm not like really big on meeting people. Mm. It's like that whole, it's not that I like frown upon that side of it, but it's just like, I don't like that side of it sort of thing. I just want to meet the person and get to know them. I don't care to. Yeah pay to meet them sort of thing and obviously they deserve to be paid for conventions and things so i'm not like knocking any of that it's just like not my cup of tea after working in the industry i just look at all that stuff a lot differently now like you know it just i don't know 
I don't know where I'm trying to explain this, but like <laughs> it's just different to me now. Like it kind of changed my mind how, or how I like view um, the wrestlers and stuff to a degree now. So yeah, no, that makes sense. Like I, I what I was gonna say is kind of like to interpret what you said is more or less like if you're gonna meet somebody, it should be like you're gonna be either like working with them or it should be more of a or less like a genuine type of interaction, not so much right. where. You know, like, if you're going to get an autograph or something like that, it shouldn't be from, you know, you standing in line and get an autograph. Like, if, it should just be out of a conversation you're having. You're hanging out one night. Right. And then that, and then that person's like, you know what? Here, here, here you go. Or, hey, maybe, you know, you, you come meet me. I'm going to be at, you know, the show later on tonight. Have a, here's a front row seat, that type of, that type of interaction. That's, that's, a, that's how I would want to go about stuff. Because, like, I, I have friends that, like, you know, or you said friends. I mean, we're a lot older now, but we used to go to like, you know, wrestling uh, shows and stuff like that and just try to meet the wrestlers after and get pictures and stuff like that. I was never like the person to do that. I would rather just like have the interaction more than anything. Be like, oh, yeah, I was able to, you know, shake someone's hand or have a quick like five minute, you know, conversation with somebody. That's how I, I, I always was. I wasn't really like the autograph or, you know, get a picture with anyone. I My friends have like, photo albums of them with like literally like tons Everyone. of different wrestlers yeah. like which is which is cool because you get you know, obviously you can go back and look at it but i'd sure. rather ha- i'd rather like you be able to be like oh yeah oh yeah yeah i know him oh yeah you want me to call him right now i can right. uh, <laughs> i can right. call for you that that type of thing it's just um, a different like relationship sort of like a different experience i guess sort of yeah thing. yeah definitely yeah um so before I let you go, a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, go for it. Interests besides wrestling and photography. I know you said you're not really into sports and stuff like that, but it, are you into like are you a movie buff? Are you a music aficionado? Like how, what 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 else? What else is uh what do you like to do besides uh being engulfed in the world of wrestling? Wrestling and toys. Um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a whole lot to be honest mm-hmm. i mean i like to play video games a bit i don't okay. game as much anymore as i used to when i was younger just because i don't have the time Same i'm always here. working on my art more times than not um but yeah i game a little bit i like i would say i love keeping up with the disney plus shows a lot mm-hmm. um Love movies ever since the pandemic, like it kind of died a bit because we weren't going like we used to, and just kind of yeah. it's like kind of out of your systems, you don't really think to do it anymore, sort of thing. Yep. Like it's sad, <laughs> but um, as most of my friends don't ever want to go, it's like okay, I'm not gonna just go. Um, but yeah, I like I said, like my interests are so like in a bubble that sometimes it's hard for me to to bond with certain people who don't speak this whole language with me because it's yeah. like, that's, that is my language, you know? So, it's, yep. um, yeah, I just have very niche interests, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what, that's why that, and that's another reason why I like, you know, I, I, I did the show just so, you know, meet like my, like minded like people, people like myself. So like, even with like video games, like what did, what, when you were playing a lot, what type, what type of games were you into? Sure. Um, so I used to play like, um grand theft auto assassin's creed um red dead now i just play like Fortnite a lot because i could play it for like a half hour and then go and do something else when i'm done mm-hmm. or whatever yeah um, i just picked up gta 5 again from seeing too many videos on facebook about like goofy things in the game so yeah <laughs> it kind of sparked me to pick it up again just to goof around um excited for the new one whenever that comes out oh man i whatever yeah, lifetime that is but i've been reading uh, up on that i'm, I'm yeah excited right? about it as well me too, me too. Um, probably won't have the time to play it but um exactly definitely, definitely pick it up <laughs> and, and exactly play it very one. slowly uh slowly but surely <laughs> right no i'm i'm the same way like i picked up the aew game yeah. i've not even broken the seal on it but i have it <laughs> you know like i just like to be artistic a lot more in my free time than yeah or consuming content that's gonna inspire my art um is probably the best way to put it these days um but i'm just like a workaholic i always have been and you know 
I put a lot of time obviously into my photography because that just fulfills me as an artist is so yeah. you know it's like tracking down like little props or buying stuff online that I could use to mimic something else um mm. you know like that's where a lot of my time goes or just opening figures and of course online shopping I guess would be a hobby too so I'm really good at doing that but yeah. <laughs> um for uh for gaming do you are you a console or a pc console gamer? console what console i've use? always been a sony guy so i have oh, nice a ps5 um and a four i have a nintendo switch i bought that just to play fortnite like in bed or whatever yeah so it's not like lighting up the whole room i could yeah. just <laughs> my side of the bed and play if my wife is sleeping or something but i haven't even done that in a while but uh <laughs> yeah i just don't buy games as much anymore. yeah i was gonna say yeah because i because i have the you know i have the ps5 i have the, I have the xbox one s i didn't get the x but uh okay. i i like the xbox because it has their what the their gaming library goes back to like i think the, the original xbox like you can oh wow if you get the game pass and, and they well they're closing the store down i think next year because they had the, the the gaming store was open still, so you can like literally purchase games that came out like freaking like fifteen years ago. Insane. Like I bought like um, I bought uh, uh what was it? Max Payne three. I have wow. from Xbox three sixty. I have uh, I have Fight Night, the last Fight Night game that came right. out ever that never came out ever again. Uh, my favorite game that I that I always go back to is Rory McIlroy golf <laughs> on, uh, from yeah, ea sports yeah. i don't know why i just i just love playing that game it's like it's relaxing and i like and i'm not like you know i'm not like a, i can't get really in depth in like long-term stories or anything like that so sure. picking up just a sports game and playing it is fine with me the sure. only it's only fine. game I'm, yeah. yeah the only game i'm really trying to play right now which is taking me forever to do is um the heck uh batman arkham arkham knight it's called yeah. and uh yeah it's it's taking it forever it's like it's like to oh, see like fun. the actual ending you have to like you have to beat every you have to like put every like all the top 10 criminals in jail which means like two-face riddler that's scare, cool. all those guys but then there's also like 244 riddler uh riddles, riddles that you have to complete which Oh I, I tried a few of them. I'm like, but it, it hurts your brain trying to like figure out like how to, cause it's like an escape room on some of them. So you go in this room and you gotta like try to figure out how the hell to get out. <laughs> and it's so confusing. So I was like, I, you know, that's the only thing I'm really playing, like going back and playing from time to time when I, when right. I have the time to, but uh, no, I love gaming too. That's, that's one of my, uh, yeah, that's one of my things. It's a good way to veg my brain. Cause like yeah. I'm very creative for a living. So sometimes I need to like, just, rot my brain for like an hour just to yeah. kind of recharge a bit um yep. you know and i love I, content so yep. but yeah i say draining. i use it to keep my like hand eye coordination going <laughs> as well to make sure i'm like i can still like you know i still have the reflexes to like <laughs> to play right you don't definitely don't want to lose that at all no of um, course <laughs> all right um so my last question i, I always end the show with 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 this question here uh, since you're a wrestling fan. Um, so it's it's basically the scenario is you have a friend, family member, or wh what have you. Um, not into wrestling, really. Um, you know, they they want to get into it, but they're like, nah, um, I'm old. I don't want to watch it. What's the, what's the one match that you would show oh, that person that would get them into watching wrestling? It could be it could be from the you know, past, present, um, whatever, golden era, your attitude era, now, like whatever. What match in you know, would you say, all right, I'm gonna this person's I'm gonna hook this person right in with this one match here? Um as far as like going back a bit, and I'm not always the best with history of the sport, but um you know, as far as like a WrestleMania match, it'd probably be like maybe Undertaker versus Sean, WrestleMania Ooh. 25 or something. But like a, mod a more modern day, like I'd definitely take uh, 
a Will Osprey versus like a Kenny Omega or something oh, that that's a good one. Yeah, as I love like I didn't really know of Will Osprey until AEW because I yeah. like, I love wrestling. But I can't keep up with like every single brand and stuff. Oh yeah, New it's Japan, GCW, yeah. NWA. <laughs> right, yeah, you know, it's just too much <laughs> wrestling after a while. But like when I saw Will Osprey in AEW, I like immediately like fell in love with him because he's just so fun to watch and um you know and that's how i know that i really like something is if i'm inspired by like someone um to recreate it in figure form so like yeah i would always say you know someone should watch him i mean people would probably use the whole argument of all the spots and stuff with him but i just think he's so fun to watch oh yeah modern day wrestling like you know, mm. people don't like the slower stuff really anymore. Mm. Or like a um, Zack Sabre Jr. is also really fun to watch, I think. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think who else. Um, as far as, like, I guess a character, too, like Bray's Wyatt family stuff, like, made me fall in love with wrestling again Yeah, years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, I've not like fallen out of love with wrestling, but he just like really, like I really got glued to him because he was just so like mm. fresh and different, and I loved everything he was about. But those would at least be some people, I guess I would. Yeah. Recommend. But like a Sean versus Undertaker, I think would be a really good match with good storytelling for someone to watch. But yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's uh, because it it really encompasses like all the. You know the obviously the drama, the action, the you know like everything that a a wrestling match without obviously the you know as they call it the Gaga like the crazy right. you know spots like you know right. chairs or you know going into the crowd or you know pulling out like a you know a fire extinguisher that type of thing right um, yeah I've I've heard so many different uh, you know options and different ways people would bring someone into wrestling. Um, no one's ever brought up that match though. That uh, really? Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, no. And I, I thought that would always be like a go-to, like as far as like yeah, you said, storytelling, ones. just yeah. en engaging. Like it, it's it, it brings you in. Like it's just a it's just a story from beginning to the you know middle to the end. Right, it's the whole a, heaven yeah. and hell thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, the whole heaven and hell thing. The you know yeah. good yeah. versus evil. That yeah. like that kind of pretty much like encompasses like. Like a wrestling match, you have the good guy. Obviously, Undertaker's right. not really a bad guy, right. but you have good guy, bad guy. Um, you have, like you said, you have your beginning, your middle, the, the end, your, your climax uh, at the end of it. I've heard people bring up, like, you know, The Rock, how Kogan at uh, WrestleMania yeah. what was yeah. that eighteen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a definitely a really good one. My choice, my choice is always. Um, uh, I was almost, I was going to say Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Roddy Piper. Um, Sure. WrestleMania, what was that? Not, was it nine? I'm, I'm like, forget myself. I'm like, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm like, or eight. I forget which one it was. But anyway, the, it was the Intercontinental title match where uh, Roddy Piper had the title and Bret Hart, you know, obviously took it off from that night. But that match literally has like every aspect. It has, it has brawling in it because, you know, Roddy Piper's not a really a technical wrestler. Um, right. He can do technical, but that's that's where Bret Hart comes in. So Bret Hart with the technical right. stuff, Roddy Piper with the brawling, and it just had like everything in it. So uh, the promo before it, it's awesome when they're just going back and forth with each other. Um, I love Roddy Piper. He's like he's one of my favorite uh, wrestlers. I'm excited for time. that ultimate to hopefully. Oh man, I can't. Yeah, yeah, I, don't I can't wait. That thing. Hopefully they drop it soon. I want it really bad. But... Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm uh, I have his. Um, I have the NECA. Um, oh, they sure. live yeah. figure. I have that. I have the uh elite version of that as well. The, sure. the Hollywood one. Um, I was able to scoop that. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. Is uh, the great movie. they live. So I'm gonna have to, yeah. I always anything that's they live, I, I try to pick it up if I can. The only thing I haven't been able to get was the um, what's his name? The uh, his partner there, the bald dude. I haven't been able to oh, get yeah, his figure. I forgot. I forgot they even did that. Yeah. Yeah, they did his figure too. It's yeah, it's hard to get like it it, yeah. it was on a website that sold it. You you bought it with the movie, like the, the Blu-ray. But right. then if you didn't get it, like you have obviously you have to go on eBay and it's like 
five hundred dollars for that oh figure. I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not buying that. But uh, no aftermarket uh, purchases for me. You know, <laughs> but um, but definitely. But no, this was awesome. Thank you for uh, thank you for for coming on. This was uh, you. This was this was a great show, man. I uh, oh, thank you so much. I like guess really, it's really humbling to always be asked to do this, and that people want to even hear me talk for an hour. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, like I said, it's it's. I, like I said, it's 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 a break from everything that they you know that they're listening to. If you especially if you're a wrestling fan, you listen to like every single wrestling podcast under the sun. But it's always good to you know these people follow you, the people that like listen to like our podcast and stuff like that. So like you know they definitely want to hear your story. Sure. Um, and I think it's I mean you you had a you had a very interesting story. I mean you're like you're like pretty much like the. I don't want to say it, but I mean, you probably don't want to say, it, but you pretty much you pretty much created wrestling figure photography. If you put it that, if you think about it, yeah, you pretty much like invented it. Um, no, I. Uh, I, I mean, if you like, I said, if you don't want to admit it, I'll I'll say it for you. Yeah, you go have, for it. <laughs> you don't have to say it. Yeah. So so uh, Matt Goldberg is the inventor of wrestling figure photography. There there it's there it said. Don't get mad, everybody. Everyone's flourishing in it too. It's oh, a yeah. good thing that he brought it up and that he started it because. Now everyone's doing it, and all your favorite wrestlers are reaching out to you and giving you thanks and stuff. So, when you get a chance, just thank Matt for <laughs> for all your for all your hard work. Now I'm joking, but um, <laughs> uh, before we go, tell everyone uh, where they can find you. Sure. Um, so my main platform is Instagram. You could find me at uh, mbg1211. You could find my personal Twitter at Matt B Goldberg. Um, you can find me also on or Twitter on X um, at Wrestle Fig News. For all your wrestling figure news, you can find me at Wrestle Zone. Um, not as exciting on there as I don't post as much as I do like uh, the news source page. Um, Facebook is MBG Films, or you could add me on as a friend on Facebook too. I have a whole profile dedicated to the community where I share my pickups and photography and just talk wrestling with you guys. Um, YouTube MBG twelve eleven even though I haven't posted on there in probably like two years or so now, and uh, yeah I think that's everything. I don't know if I left out something, but definitely follow me on Instagram for all my photography. Yeah, that's definitely the main the main place you want to go. And yeah, obviously the same here. Follow me everywhere at the MVP Marco. Uh, get all your updates on the Pod Foundation at Pod Foundation on IG. Um, also follow Chick Foley. Um, that's where you get all the updates for the Chick Foley show and everything happening in the Chick Foley universe. And follow everyone else in the Pod Foundation. Tarbuckle Tavern, Extra Cooler, uh, coming down the aisle with J Bone. Uh, we're 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 a nice group of people, and we uh we we're not negative. We stay pretty positive on these on the topics, so you might want to follow us and join us. But other than that, I will uh talk to everyone soon. Peace.